Hi, everybody. In this last lesson, um, we're going to talk about confidence intervals for sample means. So we're going to be doing everything we did in the last lesson, but this time we're going to be working with X bars instead of P hats. So we're going to be using X bars to make guesses about the true population mean mu. We use this Greek letter mu here to represent the true population mean. So before we even get into this, we've spent time making 95% confidence intervals, and we've been saying, I am 95% confident that. What does 95% confident even mean? So I've got this nice little uh, fish applet here, and where is it? Fish. There are the fish. So here's my population of fish, and, and I guess I'm Poseidon, I, I'm, the, I'm the god of the sea, and I know the true population mean is 105, and they have a standard deviation of 30. So normally I don't know that, but but because I'm I'm a god here, I know that that's what the true population mean is. So here's what a confidence interval is. I'm going to take a sample of 10 fish. There we go. I took 10 fish. I found their average, and then I made a confidence interval from that. And I keep doing that. I'm going to take another 10 fish. There's my sample. I found a mean, and I made a confidence interval. If I keep making these confidence intervals, if I keep making these intervals, eventually, oh, that one right there, see how that interval's red? It doesn't, this interval here doesn't capture the true mean. It has a lower bound of 95, uh, 59 and an upper bound of 104.9. It doesn't capture the true mean. So 95% confidence means if I keep doing this, oh, one, that's another one that didn't get it. That's another one that didn't get it. If I keep doing this over the long run, if I keep taking samples of size 10, if I let this run for a little bit, 95% of these intervals will capture the true mean. And look what it says up here. There's my success rate, which I'm at 95% right now. If I let this just run, 95% of these intervals will capture the true population mean. So when we find a confidence interval, hopefully it's one of the intervals that captures this true mean. But maybe when we make intervals, maybe based on sampling variability in the sample we find, maybe we get one of these intervals that doesn't capture the true mean. And the worst part is, is you never know. Maybe you've got a good interval. Maybe you have a bad interval. You have no idea and that's what statistics is all about. We are trying to make a guess and we're trying to make a, our best guess with the tools that we have at our disposal. So that's what 95% confidence means. If I keep taking intervals, if I keep making confidence intervals, 95% of those intervals will capture the true population mean. Or in the in last lesson, that would be the true population proportion. But you really never know what that value is, so we're just trying to make a guess at it anyway. So that's what 95% confidence actually means. If we keep taking samples, if we keep taking samples of the same size and making an interval and making an interval, 95% of those intervals will contain the parameter, that, that thing that I want to make a guess about. I'll draw it for the last time because it's my last lesson with you guys. And here's what statistics is all about. I have a population, and that population has some characteristic called a parameter. In this case, it's a, sam it's a population mean, a mu, the true average. Well, I don't know the true average, so I take a sample hopefully a representative sample, but there's variability when I take a sample, and my sample statistics then have variability. In this case, my sample statistic is X bar. And I'm gonna use a confidence interval to estimate that parameter. We're gonna to try to guess that parameter with one of these confidence intervals. And that's what inferential statistics is all about. We're making an inference about that parameter by using a representative sample and some sample statistic. So I guess number one is twice here. I really wanted it to be number one. A marine biologist is trying to determine the average length of a clownfish. So we got little Nemo, we got Nemo here. Um, explain why the population mean will never be known. 
Well, why can't you know the true average length of all the clownfish in the sea? Well, you can never measure every single clownfish. It can't be done. You can't measure every... I can't even spell every. Every clownfish. I can't do it. I should have wrote in the orange. You can't measure every clownfish. You have to take a sample. You have to take a sample. You have to sample. So I did. I collected a sample of 10 clownfish and measured their lengths in millimeters as shown below. So here are my 10 fishies. This is how long they were in millimeters. They're little guys. So the sample mean and sample standard deviation are 37.7 and 12.8 millimeters respectively. Right now, what's our best guess at mu, the population mean? Well, our best guess is x bar, the sample mean of 37.7 millimeters. But we know we want to give ourselves some wiggle room. Now, that's my sample mean, but I want to give myself a little margin of error, some wiggle room to account for the fact that when I take a sample, my sample statistics have some kind of variability built into them. So we're going to construct a confidence interval for our sample mean. And it's the same setup, but our margin of error this time is different. How do I construct a margin of error? Well, it's two times the sampling distribution. And in this case, it's really not two, but because this is not AP stats, this is algebra two, we're going to leave that number outside there as two. But remember that the standard error formula for the sampling distribution, this comes from the sampling distribution here. This comes from the sampling distribution of x bar, right? It's this, uh, the standard deviation over n, but we don't know the standard deviation, so we're going to use the sample standard deviation that we get from our data. So the, our margin of error is actually easier than it was last time. It's two times the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. So for our clownfish here, our margin of error is 2 times 12.8 divided by the square root of 10. So my margin of error is 2 times 12.8 divided by the square root of 10. My margin of error is 8.10. 8.10 is my margin of error. So how do I make my interval? Well, it's my sample mean plus or minus two standard deviations of the sampling distribution. So 37.7 plus or minus 8.1. 37.7 plus 8.1 and 37.7 minus 8.1. So my lower bound is 29.6 up to 45.8. So my confidence interval is 29.6 all the way to 45.8. That's my confidence interval lower comma upper. Interpret this confidence interval in the context of the problem. We are 95% confident, and we know what that means now. If I kept taking samples, 95% of those samples would capture the parameter. We are 95% confident. We are 95% confident that the true, not proportion, the true mean length of clownfish is between what? What are we confident that it's between? Well, 29.6, that's not a percent, that's millimeters, and 45.8 millimeters. So notice that we're working with means here. We're not working with sample proportions. We're working with means. We're using x bar. We're using x bar to estimate that parameter mu. So we're 95% confident that the true mean length of clownfish is in between uh, 29.6 millimeters and 45.8 millimeters. How do I find the confidence interval? It's my sample mean plus or minus two times the standard sample standard deviation over n. It looks just like the proportion formula. I use my p hat plus or minus two times the standard error of the sampling distribution there. So it's the same kind of setup just in a different context because we're using a different variable this time. We're looking at the sample mean different statistic instead of sample proportions. In number two here, you want to investigate how many Snapchats a student at CCHS sends in a given day. You ask every 20th student walking into school how many Snapchats they sent yesterday. The average number of Snapchats for your sample of 50, from 54 students was 75.6. That's my average. That's my sample mean, 75.6. 
and a standard deviation, there's my S of 19.47. So construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval. So how do I make a confidence interval? Well, it's my mean plus or minus a margin of error, two times the square root of S over N. Two times S over the square root of N, sorry. So when I want to find the, the confidence interval, now let's just plug it in. 75.6 plus or minus 2 times 19.47 over the square root of 54. N is your sample size. So now I just have to type that on in. 75.6 plus 2 times this alpha Y equals enter. What's well, my standard deviation? 19.47, but I need to make that of the sampling distribution, so divided by the square root of 54. And I get 80.9 is my upper bound. 80.9. And then if I do that again, but with a minus, that'll give me my lower bound. So I'm just going to scroll my way back through. Too far, of course. Minus, and my lower bound is 70.3. So what does this mean here? What are we, we're estimating that parameter. Well, what's that parameter? The true average number of Snapchats sent in a given day. So we are 95% confident of what? That the true mean number of Snapchats, number of Snapchats sent at CCHS is in a given day, in a given day, is between how many Snapchats am I sending? I think it's between 70.3 and 80.9 chats, I'll call them. So I'm using my sample to make an estimate about the parameter. So I am 95% confident that the true mean number of Snapchats sent at CCHS in a given day is between 70.3 and 80.9. I don't know exactly where it is, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in there. Um, a researcher, not a researcher, a researcher is interested in the normal body temperature of adults. A sample of 52 adults had their temperature taken and their average um, temperature was 98.29. So that's my sample mean. My sample mean was 98.29, and a standard deviation, my sample standard deviation was 0.68. State the margin of error and construct a 95% confidence interval. So my margin of error is 2 times, 2 times what? 0.68 over the square root of what? My sample size was 52. That's my margin of error. 2 times 0.68 divided by the square root of 52. Um, 0.189 I'll go with. So my margin of error is 0.189. Now I can make my interval. It's my sample mean plus or minus my margin of error. So uh, 98.29 plus 0.189. And I'm going to do that same thing but with a minus lower comma upper 98.10 so i got 98.10 as my lower bound and my upper bound is 98.48 98.48 that's my confidence interval confidence intervals aren't hard to make it's the sample mean plus two times the standard deviation, but you just have to remember, it's the, it's the sample standard, devi it's the standard deviation of the sample over the square root of n, because I need to use the sampling distribution to account for that sampling variability. That's how I account for the variability when I take a sample. Interpret this interval, I am 90, we are, I'll go we, we are 95% confident that the true mean body temperature, the true mean body temp is between, what do we think it's between? 98.10 degrees Fahrenheit and 98.48 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So does the researcher, wow, I, apparently I don't like, I just like research. I don't like researchers. Does the researcher have statistical evidence to reject the claim that the true average body temperature is 98.6? Explain based on your interval. So can I reject this claim? Is that a plausible value? So we have evidence to reject this claim. We have evidence, we have statistical evidence to reject this claim. Because 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit does not, doesn't fall in our interval. It's not a plausible value. Based on our sample, it is not a plausible value for mu. It is not a plausible value for mu, the true mean, the true average, the true mean body temperature there. So I can still make claims based on my interval, whether it falls in that interval. Is it a us usual value? Is it a possible parameter? Uh, is it a possible value for the parameter? Or is it um, not a possible value? Is it not plausible because it's outside the interval? In this case, it's outside the interval, so we're going to have to say that it's not a plausible value. We have evidence against that claim. So that's how we construct confidence intervals. Again, I'll do it one more time. We use these intervals to estimate our parameters. Sample means are x bar plus or minus two times the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. For sample proportions like the last lesson, it was p hat plus or minus two times the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for sample proportions, which looks like that. And these are 95% confidence intervals. There's other confidence levels you can use, um, but we're being 95% confident, meaning in the long run, how many of these intervals will capture the true mean? If I keep making these intervals, 95% of those intervals will capture the mean. And that's inferential statistics, guys. It's If you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend you take AP Stats next year. It's a great class, and you get, and you get to do a lot of cool good statistical work in it. And that's the unit, guys. There's no more videos. That's that's the end of Algebra 2. We end Algebra 2 on this note of confidence intervals. And I'm confident in all of you that you've learned a lot this year. And I'll save a nice uh, save a nice video message with, with all emotions. I'll, I'll save the emotions for, for next week. Bye, guys.